Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and today I am participating in Justine Hovey's Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. I hope you'll stick around to see how I created the cards you see in front of me, hear more about the hop, and find out about all of the prizes and there are lots of them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notification. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. As I mentioned in the intro, I am here today to share a project for the Save the Crafty YouTuber Hop. Normally, I would tell you more about that now and then get started on my project. But because I want you to be able to visit every stop on the hop and get entered for the prizes, I am going to get started right away with the process and share details about the hop, the prizes, and my project as we go along. One thing I do want to point out before any process starts is that I will be sharing today how to foil any stamp that you have without needing special toner ink, so make sure to keep watching. The main products that I'll be using today you can see in front of you here. As I go along I will add more tools and different things and I will let you know about those. But let's go ahead and start off with the basics. First of all I will be using Heidi Swap Mink Toner and I will be using a mint green color. For my sentiments today on my stamps, I am using this stamp set from Momenta. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It is only $3 without a coupon and you get six cute little sentiments in that nice script font. For the stamping, I'll be using Versamark ink and some clear embossing powder. Now, the technique that I'll be using for the foiling, I haven't used it with any other kind of ink or embossing powder, but you can always try that at home so you can use what you have if you don't have these exactly. I will also be using the March 2020 sheet load of cards, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. For my pattern papers today, I'm going to be using three pieces from the Paper Studios In Bloom collection. This is from Hobby Lobby, and I did already pre-select those three pages, so I'll let you get a closer look at those. I almost forgot one other item that you'll see me using. Those are the Stickabilities die cut stickers, again from Hobby Lobby, that go with this paper line. There are 24 in here, and I won't be using them exactly as stickers, but I love the images and the die cuts. As always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For today's cards, I am using the March 2020 Sheetload of Cards printable. Each month, I put out a free printable for my subscribers that shows you how you can make multiple cards quickly and easily using a single sketch and just a few sheets of pattern paper. If you would like to find out how to download the file for yourself and get more detailed information about this month's process, I will link those videos below. For now, I will tell you about the video hop while you watch me cut and start putting the cards together. The Save the Crafty YouTuber Video Hop is a celebration of card making video tutorials created by a group of talented crafters of all different styles. We are coming together to give our viewers a chance to discover other amazing card makers and help reach our monetization goals. All you have to do is watch, like the video, consider subscribing, I would really appreciate it, and click the link in the video description below to hop to the next video. Let yourself be inspired. I know that you will be. I cannot wait to watch the videos myself. And don't forget to comment because we have tons of prizes to give away. Please indicate if you are located in the USA or international so prizes can be awarded appropriately because some of the prizes, but not all, do have restrictions on them. Speaking of prizes, I am sponsoring the prize on my channel, and I'll be giving one lucky commenter a $25 gift certificate to scrapbook.com. Each stop along the way will have a prize as well, so while it isn't required to watch and comment on every video, it will increase your chances of winning something fabulous. 
Now that you have seen all of the wonderful sponsors, I wanted to slow down the video a little bit and tell you about a change that I made for this sheet load of cards. Unlike my previous sheet load of cards that I shared with you this month, I will be using heavyweight vellum in place of a couple of the pieces. I did already cut one of them, but I wanted to give special attention to this next piece. In the original sheet load instructions, the sentiment was stamped on a piece that was two by, I think, three, and then there was a mat behind it. Instead of making my sentiment piece two pieces of cardstock, I am actually using a heavyweight vellum here. This is 36 pound vellum. It's almost like a cardstock, but you can still see through it a little bit. And also because my sentiment and focal point will look different than what is on the sketch, I cut these pieces to two and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then later you'll see how I adjust these to fit the card and still fit all my focal points and my sentiments. And now let's get back to talking about the blog hop. Now, I know you might be saying to yourself, but there are so many videos to watch, I'll never get to them all. No worries. The giveaway is open for entries until April 5th. That is almost two weeks to watch and enter. Winners will be announced on April 10th on Justine's blog and YouTube channel, and I will have both of those linked in the description box below. For even more details, including the master list of participants, make sure to check out Justine's blog post, which is also linked below. Now that all of the details are out of the way, let's find out more about this card set. Once all of the pieces were cut, it was time to start putting the cards together. This looks very similar to my first card set for the month, except for this set, I am also using vellum behind this small strip in the center. I like the way that you can see just a little bit of that pattern paper behind the mat on that center strip. I kept doing this until I had all nine of my card fronts done, and then it was time to move on to the stamping. I chose the Hello Sentiment for all nine of my cards, and I will be stamping that onto my vellum cardstock with that Versamark ink. I do wanna make sure I get that nice and juicy so that when I pour my clear embossing powder on there, it sticks well. Now this vellum I have, I have found that it takes the heat from the heat gun just fine. Again, it is a thick 36 pound vellum. The next piece is going to look very similar, except I will be stamping the hello centered top to bottom and left to right, and this will make more sense later when I show you the embellishments I choose to go with these. I continued that same process until I had three with the hello in the middle and six with the hello at the bottom. And now it's time to show you some foiling magic. I did have my laminator heating up while I was doing the stamping and the heat embossing, and now I'm gonna start sending those through my laminator. I will tell you that you'll kind of want to play around with your laminator to find the right heat setting and the right carrier. On mine, I'm using an Amazon Basics, and I set mine to the five mil setting, and I used a piece of vellum that was 28 pound, so not quite as thick as the pieces below it. Once again, I continued that same process until I had completed all nine of my sentiments, and here's a look at the finished pieces. I chose nine of the die cut stickers from the embellishment pack for my cards, and I will be placing these onto the vellum pieces with foam dots or dimensionals before I place these onto the card fronts. Now, because it is a sticker and I don't want the areas without the foam tape to accidentally stick to the card front, once I have my dimensionals in place, I get out my embossing buddy and just kind of tap that on there to take off that tackiness. That is then when I pull that release paper and adhere that to my vellum piece. I'm gonna do this for all nine of these so I get my focal points all together and then I will get these adhered to each of the card fronts. 
I will be using some leftover glue dots from some paper pumpkin kits to adhere my focal points to the front of the cards. And you might be wondering why did I wait until now to put that vellum piece on the front instead of decorating it first with the foam. And the reason I did that is that's going to help me hide those glue dots the most from the front because now I could see where the glue dots would kind of be hidden from the front behind those die cut stickers. On some of them too, I did put a glue dot behind the foiled hello. And because this is a really nice thick vellum, you really cannot see those glue dots even behind that word. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my sheet load of cards today and that maybe this foiling technique was new to you. If you did enjoy this video, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. And now don't forget to go visit the crafty YouTuber who is linked at the top of my description box below to keep the hop going. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.